To find the best value sewing machine, I've got two models at different price points. First up is my premium option, the Brother Innovis A150, so-called because it offers you the choice of 150 pre-programmed stitching styles. It features a top-loading bobbin. It'll automatically thread the needle for you. And there's a thread cutter, which will automatically cut the threads when you've finished. All this can be yours for £549. My budget machine is the John Lewis 111. It costs around a quarter of the price of the premium brother, £145. This one has just 14 stitch dials, comes with a uh, front-loading bobbin in here, and has a decorative floral finish. To help me determine which sewing machine is best value for money, I'm visiting Lauren Guthrie, a winner of the Great British Sewing Bee. Hello, Lauren. Great to see you. Hi, John. Now, tell me, what makes a good sewing machine in your eyes? There's a few things to consider. The ease of use and setup is important, how you thread it, how you load the bobbin, but also the stitch selection and how it handles different types of fabric. Well, I've got two home sewing machines for us to try. Let's get sewing. OK. Great. For our first test, we're going to assess each machine's ability to alter and repurpose clothes. In particular, a pair of my very own vintage jeans. I've had them for years. I never wear them because they're too long. I'm just wondering if today maybe we could shorten them and I could make use of them. Yeah, absolutely. We just need to work out how much to shorten them by. After some quick measurements, it's time to get sewing. We're going to turn up one leg of my jeans using each machine. And we're starting with the Premium Brother. So we need to thread it first of all and there's these really handy diagrams on the top that mm. help you to work out in the order of where you need to thread it right. round. I don't know whether I'd have got there from those diagrams. The Premium Brother also has a rather nifty automatic needle threader and an easy-to-read digital display for selecting sewing modes, both of which mean we're good to go in less than a minute. So. As you can hear, the machine is quite quiet. That's good. It's not making a lot of noise. It feels quite sturdy and smooth. That stitching mm. looks nice and even and balanced. So, a good start for the premium model in the hands of a pro. But how would my amateur fingers fare when tackling the denim? I've got to keep that in a line. Yeah, and then line. just put your foot on the pedal. It's, it's going to go pretty slow. Rather kindly, Lauren had prepped the machine in its beginner mode. But despite the helping hand, there was a problem ahead. Now I've got okay. a pin coming up. OK, so stop. Pin's going off. I'm making slow but steady progress. And that's really good. Excellent. I get past the thick seam of the jeans and before long face a change of direction. We're going to do a little reverse on the spot just, to lock, just to lock the How stitches exciting. together. Press it. So it'll just go back. That's it and stop. And with that, we're done. Gosh. You've finished. You've done one side. Wow, that's amazing. The tension looks nice and even and you've mm. got a lovely hem on your jeans. Yes, I wonder if the other leg will match it. <laughs> Tackling the second hem is the budget John Lewis. It also has a handy threading guide on the machine, but when it comes to the eye of the needle, this has to be done manually. Yeah, you're messing it. It's very difficult, isn't it? My sewing career could be cut short. How do you get it through there? Thankfully, Lauren threads the needle in a jiffy. We're ready. Then we select the same three millimeter straight stitch that we used on the premium machine but there's no screen on the budget model, so it's down to diagrams and dials. And it's not long till we encounter another drawback. Whoa, whoa. Is it slightly noisier? I feel like it is noisier, yeah. A disappointing start for the budget machine, then. Time to check the quality of its stitches. I think from this side, the stitches look good. From the back, they look a little bit loose and loopy. Mm. Can you see that? Mm. So what we can just do is manually adjust mm. the tension a little bit. The other machine was doing that automatically. Oh. Even after these manual adjustments, when we get to the thickest part of the hem, the budget John Lewis can't cope. What we might have to do is just use the hand wheel... Oh, wow. <laughs> ..just to help feed it. But despite this assistance, the budget sewer continues to struggle. Right. I think we might have to just skip over that skip little bit. Skip over a bit. A disappointing showing by the budget machine in the hands of a pro. But does its simpler approach to sewing have advantages for an amateur like me? Only press on the foot pedal a little bit. Very gently. Yeah. Just make sure you keep 
The budget machine doesn't feature any speed control, and I too found issues with the thicker material. But it's not doing it. Brum, 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 brum. It's not, we're not happening. So the budget John Lewis machine comes up short in test one. In terms of setting it up and threading the machine, the, the premium brother, it was definitely easier, especially mm. when it came to threading the needle. And also it seemed to just handle the thickness of this denim fabric a bit better. And in terms of the result, I think it, it delivered a pretty tidy one. I think the stitching looks really neat and I think that'll be long-lasting. Mm. You can definitely tell the difference. John, John Lewis was certainly a long way behind the brother in a number of important aspects. Yes. I would agree. Yes. Yeah. It's looking promising for the premium machine at the halfway point then. But this test is far from sewn up. Ooh. Lauren's going to be transforming two old garments to give them a new lease of life by adding some personal touches. We're going to customise these t-shirts with a letter S, so some stitching on a pocket that also Ooh. has a buttonhole. Right, fascinating. These tasks will be a good test of our sewing machines because they require some intricate sewing. And we're starting with the buttonhole. The fabric has to be reinforced with a rectangle of stitching mm. so that the fabric doesn't come loose or tear or just stretch out over time. Lauren starts with the premium brother, which comes with a buttonhole foot that makes the process more straightforward. We're going to line that up and then I'm just putting my foot on the pedal and then the machine is automatically feeding the fabric through, so I'm just simply guiding it. A few moments later, the task is finished, with the machine coming to an automatic stop, ready for the buttonhole to be cut. It looks nice and neat and even. It kept moving through nice and easily, so it was, it was pretty straightforward to mm. use, and I'm really happy with the result. Next, it's time to accessorise the T-shirt with a letter. We're going to select our zigzag stitch here and then we're just going to manually change the width and the length of it so that it's a nice, dense line of stitching and that will make it really secure. So it's really easy to change that yep. with these plus and minus buttons here. Now we're ready to stitch and straight away Lauren has found another string to the premium machine's bow. The needle and this machine automatically stops in the fabric, which is really useful oh. because then it's easier to just yes. pivot round. So you know that whenever you take your foot off the pedal, it'll always be in the fabric and then you can just make your little pivot. Lauren quickly negotiates the tight curves of the S. OK. So when we're finished, we can Excellent. just lift it out mm. and then we've got our little S. But what about our budget sewing machine from John Lewis? It's easier on your pocket, but when it comes to stitching a pocket, it's less automated than the brother. Like the premium model, it has a buttonhole foot, but Lauren must manually change the stitch for each side of the rectangle that forms the buttonhole, making it a more laborious process. So now we've got to the end here. We yes. need to then tell the machine, OK, I'm going to turn this dial I now want to sew the oh, bottom part you... of my rectangle. Right. And there we've got our buttonhole. The result still looks good, though. So I agree. I think it does still look really good. There's yeah. just a little bit more work yes. in achieving that. Next, we're going to sew on the S with a zigzag stitch. But once again, the process is more complicated on the budget John Lewis machine. Hmm. Now, the difference with this machine is that sometimes when you stop sewing, the needle might be up out of the fabric. Right. Sometimes it might be down. If you want to pivot, you have to then manually lower it down mm -hmm. and then you can do your little pivot so that it stays right. in position. OK, so ah. we're finished. But it's all looking really smooth and even. Mm. It didn't get stuck in the machine. Yes. So overall, I'm pretty impressed. So, after a day of hemming and stitching, which of our machines does Lauren think is the best value? The £549 brother or the £145 John Lewis? For me, it's probably going to be the premium brother. I think the ease of use is better. It has those additional functions that make it a bit more accessible. I think I agree with you. If I were to take up sewing, I'd really appreciate all those extra features like the automatic threading, the fact that you've got that easy cutting of the thread. 
it offers value for money because you're going to have longevity out of it. Mm. If you get the budget version, you might outgrow it in a couple of years, whereas the Premium Brothers more likely to last you a lifetime and really ah. grow with your hobby. 